Now, sometimes we elect narcissistic sociopaths and liars to public office. It happens. Unfortunately, it happens more than it should, but it does happen. So let's take a look at one of these local races in Washington state, and let's see what we can learn from the mistakes that were made this time around. Washington state's 10th legislative district is located mostly in Island County, and it includes small parts of Skagit County as well. And it's mostly kind of a rural district, but it happens to be located within easy ferry and vehicle commute from Seattle. In fact, many people who are attempting to escape the high taxes, the escalating crime, ugly homelessness, the drug addict camps, and, the other, and other, all these other pretty much inevitable results of the inevitable consequences of having a lefty progressive uh, regressives there uh, in the political control of the city. It always goes downhill when that crew takes over, and other people usually try to flee if they have the means to do so. So some of these people are gonna to flee to Woodby Island and other beautiful locations in the 10th Legislative District. So it's well known that the 10th Legislative District is considered a swing district. And this is clearly indicated by recent election results and the fact that it has been occupied by politicians who identified with the Democratic Party and then they're replaced by Republicans. And each of Washington's 49th legislative districts, they, they have one senator and they actually have two state reps in them. And recently the 10th had become even more obvious swing district because they had a Republican senator and then they had both a Republican and a Democrat legislator. So the Republican state legislator formerly holding the seat now was Representative Greg Gilday, and he was challenged by a well-funded kind of hyper-partisan lefty challenger named Clyde Shavers. And in the recent election, uh, by just 216 votes, Clyde, out of, out of 75,000 that were cast, actually, um, Clyde Shavers managed to win. Now, sometimes people say that their vote doesn't count, but I'm going to tell you that this is one of the many recent election results in Washington state where just a few votes would have made a huge difference. Anyway, let's get to the narcissistic, sociopathic liar part of the story. And now first I want to point out that there are plenty of narcissistic, sociopathic liars in government. In fact, people who fit this definition tend to congregate in great numbers in the halls of political power. And it kind of comes with the territory, and mainly it's a predictable uh, human nature result of a concentration of both unchecked power and access to billions of dollars, especially billions of dollars of other people's money, and uh, that you can always be super generous with. And conveniently, some of it's going to come back into your pockets. And because there's a tendency to have the jobs concentrate in government where you can abuse your position for personal gain without much exposure or pushback, if you play the game right, that's a, let's be honest, it's not like the remnants of any kind of corporate media are going to hold these people accountable. And it isn't like anyone in government pretending to be the check and balance on this stuff that they're actually doing their jobs. So the line portion of the story really became public when the Democratic Party challenger, soon to be state legislator Clyde Shaver's father, went public with a letter that he wrote about the fact that his son was uh, excessively and unnecessarily really lying about himself in an attempt to win public office. Now I've linked to this letter below. I encourage you to, to read it. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice is that this father is clearly anguished about writing this letter, and it's easy to sympathize with this man, knowing that this letter would create a rift with his son, who he clearly loves. I mean, it appears that he believes his son tried to link uh, his parents into his lies and that they could no longer stand silently by. So essentially, Clyde Shaver's father pointed out several key categories of lying and the falsehoods that Clyde Shaver was actually spreading in the community with the help of hundreds of thousands of dollars, of course, and leftist campaign cash. And they can basically be summarized as follows. Uh, Clyde lied about his military service. Uh, apparently, he made claims about his roles and status as an officer that uh, simply were not true. Clyde also lied about being an attorney, and in fact, actually, I filed a bar complaint against him for this false representation, which he made both in claims online, in person, and on his, more importantly, on his uh, official financial affairs form that he filed the Public Disclosure Commission. He actually did work for, and as far as I know, still does, work for Perkins Coie, which is a Seattle law firm, mostly known for their hyper-partisan work supporting Democrats in the state, and they've recently become nationally famous for being a conduit for the Russian collusion hoax dossier a few, uh, few years ago. So, uh, but Schaefer's not an attorney, as he claimed. In fact, he had failed to pass the bar exam this last summer. 
Lie number three category was apparently Clyde, uh, he liked lying about being chronically homeless, which is kind of weird, but he did. Uh, number four, he lied about having an agricultural farm background. As his father pointed out, they did have a small garden in their backyard in Kirkland growing up, but this probably wouldn't count as a farm for most people. And number five, Clyde had no attachment to the district in which he had won uh, election. He actually moved into a temporary bed and breakfast to pretend to have an address there, but he, he really didn't know much about the district at all. Number six, Clyde apparently misrepresented his father's law enforcement background. And uh, number seven, when you finish this letter from Cl uh, his father, it kind of makes you wonder if there was much of any honesty in the Clyde Shaver's kind of fake campaign presentation of himself or how he represented himself to the community. We we'll probably will never know the full extent of the deception Clyde Shavers conducted in his effort to run for office. What is particularly odd about this, at least to me, uh, in his effort to deceive, is the fact that Clyde Shavers' real resume uh, would have been adequate for anybody running for office, uh, anybody normally. I mean, he did actually serve in the military. He didn't do what he said, but, you know, he was there. And by all, I mean, it's not like he got kicked out for doing something terrible. And he did graduate from Yale Law School. Most people would be proud of that fact. It's weird that you would have to just make up and embellish and lie after you've had actually what I would think would be a pretty good resume. And why would you bother to lie about everything else? I mean, what could be enough to work on in this district to find that the truth is often not good enough for people who have a compulsion to lie? And now he's going to be in the legislature for at least the next two years. And while this is bad news for Washington State, there are several lessons that we can learn from this fiasco, which I think should be emphasized for all people who care about actually having some level of at least marginally honest government representation. And this is really less about partisanship than it appears. I mean, judging from Shaver's willingness to lie about everything, I'm sure he would have lied about being a Republican if he thought that would be the path to power. He certainly wouldn't be the first one to do that in our state. But regardless, let's just look at some of these lessons here. I mean, lesson number one, the father's letter and the significant relevant information it disclosed came out far too late in the election process. Um, there's no such thing as an October surprise in Washington State's election month any longer. Because by the time an October story makes the rounds, half the people in the district have already voted due to Washington State's weird and this kind of regressive mail-in ballot scheme. I mean, they've had their ballots for a month, and so half of them have been mailed in by that point. And sure, the local paper, they rescinded their endorsement of Shavers, but it was far too late to make any difference. And of course, there were also hun probably hundreds of late voters who read the story, and then it shifted them against Shavers, but there were plenty of reports of hundreds of other people who had already mailed their ballot in, and there was no way for them to rescind their vote or to get their ballot back for a do-over after they found out how deceptive and dishonest this guy was. Now, political consultants, when they come from out of state into Washington, they often kind of ply their wares here, and they always make the mistake of waiting too long to expose a scandal or a story like this. They, they think it gives them some type of strategic advantage. And in modern times, with a one-month window of voting, with an all-mail-in voting process like Washington State, there's never any good reason to delay or sit on a story. So even if you launch a story in time, it still takes a long while for it to seep into the consciousness of the majority of people. I mean, so the lesson is when you find the story, get it out there. Uh, lesson number two, and this is really worth emphasizing to anybody who cares about the political process, something that I've learned long ago, people lie. And some people are so sociopathic that they will lie brazenly and openly, even about stupid and little things that you could easily verify as lies. And Shavers is hardly the first person to run for office who lied about their resume. It, it actually happens all the time. I've caught multiple politicians, usually at kind of a lower level of office, uh, holding, for uh, example, a uh, line about maybe where they graduate from college. Um, a few years ago, uh, I was working with some other people, and we actually caught a Mercer Island City Councilwoman who lied about graduating from Cornell, of all places. I mean, she never actually graduated at all. And it's not like there weren't Cornell graduates living in the community to go and check and be able to verify that. I mean, these things can be verified, and you should verify them. But for some reason, lying about your military service appears to also be a common thing as well. And this is, of course, part of the whole stolen valor effort where veterans groups try to expose people who are uh, trying to promote themselves via deception and the fact that most people do hold military service in high regard. And uh, this could have been uncovered by reasonable due diligence, in this case early on, 
much of the public record uh, when it comes to your military service, it, you can access it. And finally, it just isn't that hard to uncover the fact that the guy wasn't an attorney. I mean, he posted on social media that he failed the bar exam. So um, there should have been at least one or two questions about how he experienced chronic homelessness and somehow ran a farm from urban Kirkland and Yale. That just doesn't match. So, you know, please don't expect the media, though, to do this job for you. I think too many people do that. If it's a Democrat running for office, there isn't a single mainstream paper or news channel in Washington state that are going to check this kind of thing on their own. They won't. They probably will confront a Republican about it if, if, they, uh, if they are notified about it, but they're never going to check Democrats ever unless there's some type of political intramural fight going on. You have to do this homework yourself. And the political consultants are often just too lazy or distracted to do it themselves, regardless of what they say. So anyway, you know, there were several election results that were very disappointing in Washington state. Uh, the 10th legislative district, this was definitely one of them. Now, in Clyde Shaver's defense, he should feel right at home in Olympia, and he might even learn a few helpful tips from people with many decades more of experience in sociopathic lying to the voters. Perhaps he can pick up a few pointers for them to do it more effectively in the future.